Hey everybody, welcome to Tuesday Night Craft Along. <laughs> it's so fun to see everybody popping in here. I love seeing all your comments and everybody talking with each other. It's so great knowing that everybody is really getting to know each other. So that's kind of cool. Um, tonight we are actually, this, uh, Alan found this background for me because the card that we're going to be making tonight, or that I'm going to be making tonight, um, is actually, it's a fall card. And I'll tell you the little story in a moment, but um, this picture is just perfect for it. And he found this actually on a site. I, I, he said it's Michigan. So I'm dying to know where this beautiful covered, you know, this bridge is in Michigan with all the fall colors and stuff. So you're going to be seeing a lot of fall stuff from me because it's, it's that time of year and I love it. So anyway, gosh, it is so good to see so many people, so many familiar names. Sandy Yee is here, Jen Ray, Lisa Rolova, Marsha Ball. Who else is out here? Alan finally said hello. I see that out there. I was asking him, like, you have to say something. People want to hear from you. And he says, nobody wants to hear from me. They want to hear from you. And I'm like, believe me, I think they like you just a little. So anyway, we have Marilyn M. It says from Southeast Michigan. And I'm wondering where in Southeast Michigan, because that's where we are. Who else is out here? Boy, oh boy, it's so nice to see everybody. Beverly Gleason, uh, Margaret Chapman, I hope you're doing well. Hope everything is healing. Um, and who's here? Let me see, a couple more names. Um, Blanca's here, Stephanie Sharples. I know I saw Cindy Patty. Um, gosh, so many people, it's so wonderful. Thank you guys. I hope you guys brought something to craft along with, since this is a craft along. I'm gonna be doing a fall card. And I think I gave you a little bit of a of a of a sneak peek. If you got the um, um, if you get the little newsletter announcement thing that we sent out um, earlier, that we we sent it about an hour early. It comes out in your email. And the title of today's card is Kensington in Fall because there's a street that is uh, behind um, the subdivision um, that we are in, I guess, or by. Um, anyway, the street is called Kensington and it's an, it's an absolutely beautiful street. It's one of my favorite streets in the entire area. And I remember when I was a kid, if, I, if, we, if we were ever on that street for whatever reason, I used to think, oh boy, I'd love to live here sometime. And now we live right here and it's beautiful. It's, it's like this beautiful, like kind of hilly street and you, know, you get this beautiful canopy of trees over the top of it. And it's just stunning in the summer when it's all the trees are green and then when everything turns colors for the fall and then, oh my gosh, to drive through there in the winter time when it's all icy and snowy, it's, it's like one of those fairy tale magical roads and I just love it. So that being said, today's card is actually kind of my attempt to use some of our new products to kind of create a setting that's similar to that for fall. So I'm going to switch cameras and we're going to get started and hopefully you guys have something to craft along with and we're going to have some fun. So let me switch on over. Alrighty. Let's see. I have a lot of things that we're going to be working with today. To start off with, the star of the show is going to be Trusted Friend. Now, uh, last week I used this little tree and the tree stump from this set, but we're actually gonna be using the characters in here this time. So you can see these really, really sweet little mice. In here, the sweet are, are the sweet. In here, these mice are actually kind of like having a little tea party and they're, they're kind of eating some, you know, some little tea and bread and, and just kind of dancing and playing around in the fall. But I thought it would be fun to uh, make them do something else. So we're gonna put them in this car and they're gonna go for a ride. <laughs> that would be cute. This is one of my absolute favorite um, stamp sets, favorite pieces from this entire collection that we have going on here. Um, I love this set. I love it because, well, two reasons really. I love how kind of cartoony and fun and rounded these illustrations are of the cars. The other thing I love about it is that when you cut it out with the dies, it cuts the windows. And um, I used this last week, and we're, I think I used this one last week, and we're actually going to be using the car that is kind of straight on this time. So we're going to see how this is going to work out. Now, as I was working, I ended up pulling 
the um, I needed some little accessory things, and so I grabbed this uh, Country Corner Accessories, which I think this is a fantastic staple to have in your collection because all through the year you might be able to, you know, fill in on just about any of your cards using some of these little pieces. They're designed really just to be accessories, and so this time I actually pulled in uh, this lamp post and I've pulled in this little. Um, a uh, little birdhouse too. And then I grabbed this die set and I'm not actually working with the tree. There is a coordinating stamp set that goes with the country house die set. But I'm using just these two dies right here because I wanted to create some bushes or shrubbery, whatever you want to call it, as well as, as some tree tops. And so you'll understand what I mean by that coming up soon. Next, I'm going to be using a sentiment from the Harvest Wishes. This is our brand new stack set. So we have the Wave Ribbon Stack Banner die. We have the Harvest Wishes. We also have a Christmas Wishes uh, to go with the same die set. But I wanted to use this one, and you can see I've already stamped and cut a bunch of those, and I'm going to pull one of these out of here. I like to keep them in the back there so that they're ready for me to grab. And so I'm going to grab one of those for this card. I don't know which one yet. And then I grab my trusty rainy day stencil. If you don't have this stencil, I highly recommend you get it because this is something that I grab all the time. This is not a, a part of the new collection, but uh, this is just like milk and bread. Got to have it. All righty. And I should probably say too, Alan is standing by for your questions. We love questions. I will answer anything that I can. I will do my best. Um, we also have a giveaway at the end of our craft along. And uh, the giveaway, the winner is chosen from the comments. So you do have to comment in order for us to know that you're here. It's the only way we can choose you. So let me see. I've gone ahead. Now, I've got to tell you, I do not have any clue how this card is going to turn out. I have an idea. I have what I've planned. I haven't laid it out. I don't know if it's going to work. <laughs> this is probably the most concerned I've been that I'm going to have an absolute fail <laughs> live on camera, but we'll see. <laughs> so, all righty. Let's see what I have in here. I have my A2 card base. So this is a four and a quarter by five and a half inch card base. It's scored in half at four and a quarter. So when I open it up, it's just half of a letter sheet of paper. And then I grabbed, I've already done the blending here. You've seen me do blending before, so I'm not going to actually do any blending, but I wanted to show you what this is. For those of you that don't know, my favorite blending paper is the Strathmore Bristol Smooth Surface. We do have this in the LDRS Creative Store. This is my go-to whenever I'm going to be blending backgrounds uh, with inks. It is fantastic. Oh, shoot, I'm dropping things. I'll be right back, folks. Hold on. <laughs> oh, my gosh. You almost heard a big crash. <laughs> All right, so here, this is where I used my uh, my rainy day stencil and I use the top of it if you're not familiar with the way our scene building stencils work if you're new here our scene building stencils they're six by six stencils and they have multiple elements on one uh, stencil so we use the edges for example of this one for beautiful billowy clouds and then at the bottom it's cut out so that you can create grass and then we also have full clouds if you wanted to create a more solid cloud right there in the center and then we have the rain droplets uh, going throughout and those are in varying sizes so you can create a full scene with just one stencil as opposed to having to go and buy multiple stencils and you know it's we're, we're all about trying to make sure that we guys that, that we give you guys the best products the best quality and the best price so I think that it's a really good price if I can get four or five stencils in one that's just how I feel Anyway, I've gone ahead and I've done my little billowy clouds with my little blender. You've seen me do this a million times. Here's my little blender. I used Marina Madness because that's my favorite color for clouds. And I even have a little mistake down here that I don't care about because it's going to get covered. Um, I'll tell you about those in a moment. I've colored up some of these and I thought it would be fun if I went ahead and finished the coloring. So um, these are stamped from 
the, um, let's see, these are the two from the accessories set. These are the three mice that I chose, and these are all from the City Streets car set. So I thought it'd be fun if we did a little bit of coloring tonight because I don't often do coloring. I usually have things all colored up by the time I get here to this point. So, or I got a gazillion markers over here. So you just kind of heard those all hit the, hit the table. <laughs> so I'm going to start with this car and you can see I've already started it. I started it because I wasn't planning on coloring for you tonight, but I thought, you know what, I'm going to do it. I'm going to color. See if I can show you the way I do it anyway. And my, my way is not the right way. Now I like to have, and by that I mean it's not the wrong way either. <laughs> I don't just color the wrong way. Um, but what I mean by that is there isn't only one way of doing it. So <coughs> I decided, excuse me, I decided to make this car red. I thought it would be fun because I'm gonna have these, these beautiful kind of greens and golds and oranges or um, I don't know what color that is. What, what color do you call that? It's not orange. It's like a pumpkin color almost. I don't know. Perfect for fall. But I really, really wanted the tree to pop. So I grabbed, I thought I'm going to do it in red. And I'll have a little bit of red here in the little fire hydrant too. So I really wanted the car to be red and it's going to pop. So I grabbed four colors. I've got, these are Copics. You can use what you have. R20, R22. Let's see, make sure I get the right side. And mine are kind of a mess, but two, four. And then if needed, I've got two, seven. We'll see if I need it. I don't usually open mine up. I'm just laying these, you know, and, and, and I, I'm just laying these out here so that you can see what colors I'm using, but I don't usually leave them open while I'm doing this. Um, so, all right, so this is my lightest one that I'm starting with. It's R20. I'm gonna color this very, very simply. I like to go light to dark. So I'm gonna go ahead and put a base of color down. I like to go light to dark. I think it kind of helps me to control um, my shadows and my color a little bit better. But you know, if you learned dark to light, then by all means, go dark to light. Completely up to you. Sheila said that's burnt orange. Oh, burnt orange, very good. Thank you, Sheila. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You know, sometimes you, your brain just doesn't, well, mine anyway, I'm not, I don't mean you, I mean me. <laughs> sometimes the brain just doesn't work. Okay, so. So I have like one layer of 20, of R20 down. I'm gonna go up in color to R22. And this is where I'm gonna kind of start deciding where I want my bright spots to be. So I'm gonna give this a little bit of color kind of on the outside. These, um, the artist, the illustrator has rounded these for me. So I wanna make sure I kind of uh, follow along with that a bit and maintain some of that rounded kind of a look. And I'm gonna do that with the, um, the way I lay the color down, just by kind of creating some brighter spots where it might be a little more forward. And right now it's not about all being perfect. I'm literally just laying some color down. And I can already see I'm, where I made one little goofball and I don't normally correct as I go along, but with red, I'm very weird about it. I have a little bit of, a little bit of red right in that yellow. And so I grabbed my, uh, my blender to kind of clean that up a bit. So now I'm gonna go up one color to R24. And I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna have just a little I'm going to put a little less of that down. I'm not going for a real, you know, look to this, a realistic look. I love the cartoon feel of this car. So I do want to maintain that. But I do want it to look red. So you're going to see me lay a lot of color down because I don't want it to look pink in the end. 
And so in order to get that rounded kind of a feel to it, I'm going to keep my color just a little bit to the out, that outer edge, keeping in mind that my light source is in front of the car. Okay, so the light source is as though it's coming in in this direction at the car. And now I'm going up to our 27, tiny, tiny little bit of that dark, dark red there, just in the darkest areas. Well, I was asking about the significance of your rubber bands and your markers. Oh, my rubber, those are, um, those are actually little things of tape. Uh, somebody's asking about the rubber bands on my markers. I'm guessing you made these. Yes. And that's actually tape and that's that's why you'll see my name on some of my markers and it's rubbed off as well see how it rubs off um way back in the day I, when i was teaching um I, I would put my name like whatever markers i would take when i would go teach at a store i would put my name on the marker because i didn't want to be taking my markers they're not inexpensive right <laughs> so and that happens you, know, you get a whole lot of people kind of in front of your table they're looking to see what you're doing and stuff and you just never know. Things go missing. It just does happen. That's the reality of it. So I would put my name on it, but then it would start to wear off. So then I thought, well, I'm going to put a little piece of tape around it. And so that's why there's tape on it. And um, the thing is, is now if I remove it, you can see how dirty my markers are. <laughs> so, so I just leave them on there at this point. <laughs> okay, so I've gone up. I've used all four of those colors. Now I'm going to come in with one of my mediums, which is kind of in, it's my R20. And it's kind of in the middle. And I'm going to push that color now kind of all into the center. But I'm going to leave that little bit of the center open. Because I want to uh, make sure I leave room for a highlight. So I'm just pushing a little bit of color just to blend. And then I'm going to take my lightest color and fill that in. And that's just going to give me that little bit of a highlight. And I'm not going to go over every little ounce of that. Because if I were to pull that color from here, it's going to lighten up that darker area. And I don't want that to happen. So I'm just going to kind of come in with my light color in those whiter, brighter areas. And again, this may not be perfect. I don't care if it's perfect. I just want it to be cute. That's my concern. If something isn't blending exactly the way you want it, make some little circles and that'll help it to blend better. I'm going to come back in and just fill in a tiny little bit. This is an R22. It's some of my R22 right now, just to kind of bring some of that color. It looks a little bit lighter in the center than I want it to be. And so I'm just kind of going up, and then this is a 24 again. Just going to darken some of those areas where I'm not happy with it. There we go. And then my darkest, which is my 27, just to get in there. And now one of my favorite things to do, this is a 22. One of my favorite things to do is to make something look old. Oops, got the wrong marker. I'm going to put these reds away. I love making things look old when I'm coloring. Put all these caps on here. So and a favorite way for me to do that is to grab some of my ends. Um, I do see right here where I got, this is my rope, wrong one. Oh boy. Always check your caps. If you're not sure what color you have in your hand, check your cap. Where is my, I'm missing my, here it is. This is my blender. I have a little bit of color down in here, pink, that I don't want. Kind of 
fell below the line. So I use my blender to clean that up. We have some questions here. Reagan, Reagan is saying, do you have a suggestion for a good kit of Copic markers? Which color groups are best to purchase? Oh boy, that's a tough one. Um, here's what I can tell you. I, you know, cause I, I have a lot of colors and I like to vary my colors. I get sick of colors. I think it's good to have, um, nice little groupings. And I think to have some of your favorite colors, I think to have some reds is wonderful. The R twenties are, that's what I'm working with here. These are my go-to reds. And if you notice, I don't have every single color. So I have 20, 24, there it is. Sorry, 20, 22, 24. And then I jump to 27 and I think I actually have a 29. Um, I don't use that darkest one very often. These first three are probably my my go-to. If you want a beautiful red, you can get away with R20, 22, and 24. I think if you have three colors, like three variations, if you have a light, a medium, and, and a dark, and if you have a number in between them that you, you know, that you're missing. So instead of like, you know, some of the colors will go like 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, whatever. Choose either the evens or choose the odds, I guess is what I'm saying. And I would do that with a, you know, with several color variations. You know, if you like blues, um, you know, your Bs, I, I love B, uh, B20s and I love B90s. Um, you know, there's, the, you know, the, you're, you're going to have different shades of blue and purple and greens that you like. Um, when it comes to the colors that you're going to be coloring, let's say clothing with, uh, things like that, I think it's good to have to pick, you know, if you're going to have a starter, and you like your B, you, like if you like your B90s, go with, you know, a B90, 93, uh, 95. Um, and stick with those for a while if you don't want a big investment in it. But when it comes to things like greens, I'm all over the place with greens. Greens are one of those things where I don't necessarily just have evens and odds because I like to have a variety of greens. I like some to look kind of, you know, yellowy green and some to look more you know, kind of like grass green or forest green or olive green. And you're not going to get that variation unless you kind of pick and choose across their entire um, color chart. And that's a really good place to go too. is look at the Copic color chart because uh, they're, they're, they're pretty good with those colors and see which colors within each color scheme are pleasing to your eye. If you like more orangey reds, go in that direction. If you like more berry or true Christmassy, you know, kinds of reds, um, burgundies, whatever it is, then go in that area. But I would, I would get three or four, um, and I would do evens or odds. When it comes to grays, I do the same kind of thing. I like to have warm grays. Those are your W's. Neutrals are your N's. And cool grays, those are your C's. A cool gray is going to have a blue undertone. Um, a warm gray is going to have a brown undertone. And a, um, um, a neutral is not going to have either. And I would have a variation of those as well. Again, either evens or odds. Hopefully that helps. Um, because there's different times where you're gonna be using different ones. So for what I'm doing here today, brings me to the grays, I've got neutrals. Um, and I chose the neutrals for this because I'm, um, I'm not working with a lot of browns. I'm not working with, I don't want this to give um, kind of a really old fashioned look. I want to have a little bit of a, you know, a dirty kind of look to it. Um, but I didn't want to add brown into my red. So I didn't go with a warm gray. I also didn't go with a cool gray because I didn't want to add uh, more blue into it. A neutral is fantastic if you're going to be um, uh, if you want to do things like, you know, tires on a car, if you want to create kind of the silvery gray look, you know, to, you know, to the, um, the metal or whatever that is on the car. Um, but it's also really great for adding, uh, some age without adding warmth. So I have grabbed right now, let me put this down here. I got to get in the habit of putting this down here. This is an N1. And I'm bringing some of that N1 into my shadow here. Look at the difference that little bit of gray makes. It just gives it more depth. So I'm going to pull some of that in here wherever I want to kind of deepen my shadows. It also, I think, gives it a little bit of age. Put some of this on the ends. 
on the outer edge, just a tiny, tiny little bit there. It helps to kind of round the image a little bit. I always start light with this and then I go darker if necessary because I can always put more in, but I can't really take it out. So Alan, there were more questions. Suzanne, have you taken, have you taken Copic coloring classes or do you learn on your own? That's a great question. Um, back in the day when I first found my very first Copics, uh, we actually, there was a, there was a class that was in Grand Rapids and I was doing all this, you know, looking things up online and, and everything. And Alan actually found this class in Grand Rapids, Michigan. And he's like, it's a certification class. Maybe you should go. And he's ever so supportive. I got to tell you, he really is. He's fantastic. I don't say that sarcastically. He's wonderful. Um, he's laughing now. He thinks I'm kidding, but I really mean it. Um, so anyway, so I went and I took the class. And as it turns out, <laughs> um, I, I don't know what the classes are like now, but that many years ago, now, I, by the way, I've gone up to an N3. That many years ago, when you took a class from Copic, it really was more about how to sell the product in your store rather than how to use the product. So I walked away with it having learned almost nothing. Uh, walked away from it, I should say, not with it. And then, um, and that was when I kind of learned what, what blogging was. And uh, give credit to Suzanne Dean. I don't know how many of you know her. Um, she and I were friends back in the day. Um, I haven't seen her in a long time. But anyway, um, I found her blog. And I thought, what is this blog thing? And uh, then I just started watching videos. And I watched her color a little bit. Um, I also got more into watercolors. And I found Christine Dark, who was phenomenal with uh, with, with painting and, and watercoloring. And so I started watching a lot of videos. Um, and that was really a big deal for me. That's where I really learned a lot, but I already had a background in art. I already had a background in painting and coloring and drawing and stuff. Um, but, th but it really did make a difference and it helped me a lot. So that is how I would answer that question. Cindy is saying, when you create your cards, which type of cardstock do you prefer to use textured or smooth? Um, I actually prefer, um, hmm, depends on what part we're talking about. Um, if we're talking about cardstock like this, I do like to have a little bit of texture. If it's colored cardstock, I, I like to have a little bit of texture. Um, but, um, you know, it, I, I also do have smooth, so this is smooth. It's not like I really go for one or the other and I don't mind mixing them, but I like the look and feel of a little bit of texture to it. So if I, if I have access to that, then I will have it. Um, otherwise I will use smooth. Um, good question. Okay. So looks like this car is just about done. We do have one more little piece down here to do. And I think I'm going to add a little bit of blue just cause I want a different color in here. A little bit of blue. This is, I got to show you what it is. B91. I tend to use the same colors throughout the card. So I already used B91 and B93 on the mailbox here. Here's my B93. So if I'm going to bring blue in somewhere else, I'm going to use the same colors because I like things to coordinate. I like it to have the same kind of feeling across the board. And then I'm going to go to an N3. Give me this really dark kind of gray up in those corners. And then I have an N0 to push that out a little bit, create a little bit of age back to my N1 because I don't like that that is so white all the way across there. And I'm just going to Bring in a little more color there. So now we just have a little bit of little bit of color to that little plate in the front. And it's different than the car. So I think it stands out. Suzanne Dean. Oh, Christine Dark. Mm-hmm. Suzanne Dean, um, you will be able to find some videos of hers from several years ago. Um, she does not craft any longer um, due to, um, 
um, some medical reasons, but anyway, um, so, but you will be able to find a lot of, uh, her videos out and she does a beautiful job. Oh, this by the way is a Y15. Sometimes I get a little, I forget that I'm showing people. <laughs> I just start coloring. So it's a Y15 and a Y17. Uh, Y17 is a little bit more orangey. And then the Y15 kind of gives me that little bit of a brighter yellow right in the center, which I just undid. I blended them together. Um, it's always really, it's always good to have your colorless blender on hand. I blended those colors a little bit too much together in the center. So I'm going to pull some of that color out with my blender and it gives me a highlight. How fast do Copics dry? Somebody's asking me. Who's asking me? Cindy's asking. Um, well, you know, I'll tell you, I, a lot of that has to do, it, it, they, they do, I mean, you know, you've got play with them. The play that you're going to have with them is going to be dependent upon your paper. Um, this is what I use when I, when I'm coloring with, with Copics, it's Nina classic crest solar white cardstock. We are going to have this in the store. I'll tell you that I finally found, um, uh, a great place to, uh, to get it so that I can pr provide it to you guys at a good price. Oh, let me ask you this. And maybe, maybe you guys can answer this for me. My question to you would be, would you rather, if you were purchasing it from the store, would you rather have it uh, full size sheets or already cut to, uh, to A2 sized? Uh, anyway, Nina Classic Crest Solar White, 110 pound cover weight. It is fantastic. Um, you're going to have a lot of play with your markers. Um, I've even come in, you know, like the next day and added a little bit of color and still had a little bit of play with it, which is good. But they're, they're dry to the touch. I mean, they're not wet. Um, but, but you will have, uh, time with them. Um, I'm going to go ahead and I've got my ends again, my end, uh, my grays. So we're going to add some color into, ah, let me put these up here again. N zero. I'm just going to kind of quickly color this up. This little lamp post. I'm putting color kind of on the outs on the outer edges a bit and leaving the center white and I'm just kind of zigzagging and jagging it along there. Yes, those are technical terms, folks. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, what I mean is I'm not solid coloring the whole thing because I want it to look like it's kind of, you know, like the light is bouncing off of it a bit. So we get a little bit of shadow with it. So that was an N1. Next is N3. Again, just to the outer edge, a tiny little bit. I think the consensus is full size. Full size, okay. Um, so they can use it for slim lines. Ah, very good, okay. Okay, so. People are saying you too. Okay, so we have a few people saying A2, but I do agree that it might be good to have it full size, especially if you want to use it for slimline. It's a lot easier to ship when it's cut, you know, <laughs> size-wise. Okay, so now I'm filling in with the N0 just so we don't end up with a ton of white. But you can see that I've just kind of textured that a little bit with my N0, 1, and 3. And granted, I, I, you know, I do have every other color here. So I have, you know, I have the odds, but the lightest N is the zero. So even though that's an even, I grab it. So I always grab the lightest color of something too, um, in, in any color that I get, get the lightest one. Because um, it's very important to be able to have a highlight and you can only do your highlights with your really light colors. So I'm going to go ahead now and let me see, I think I'm going to make this little house here. Hmm. I'm going to do this. Oops, wrong side. This is my R20 right there. I'm going to make this little house. I'm going to go right up to a 24 just to make this little heart kind of red. There we go. But I'm going to grab my blues again, my B91 and B95, if I can get them to stand up. And I'm going to color this house in a little bit.
There's 91. Here's a little bit of 93 just to kind of give it a little bit of uh, shadow to it. That's all there is to that. And then I'm going to do the roof, the top of this in a pretty red. So that is R20. Twenty-two, twenty-four. Okay, this should be a little bit closer with the camera on this. I'm realizing now. I'm gonna go up to a twenty-seven on that just to have a good um, difference in color. Okay, now I'm gonna show you how easy it is to color up these little mice. And these super sweet mice, I'm only going to grab uh, three colors. Now I've already done their little ears in R11. So I just literally came in and just filled it in with R11 on those teeny tiny little, little ears there. And actually I'm trying to think, this guy I don't think I'm going to need, but we'll color him up. We'll see. So I've got N0. And one, oops, see, knocking everything over, and N3. Now, I don't want a ton of color on these. This is my lightest. This is N0. I'm going to leave some white on this guy. I just want to kind of create a little bit of uh, definition to his features. A little bit of shadow on the side here, keeping some of his face white. And then I'm going to go in again on the same kind of thing. And those little crevices on the underside of the ear here, this little, little kind of tuck of the ear. Top of his head just a little bit, maybe a tiny bit up under his cheeks. And that little tuck of the ear there. Just to kind of create a little bit of lift and a little bit of shadow and color into the face, top of that head just a little bit. So that was just N0. This is N1. I'm going to go even less now with N1 and I may not even use N3. So this is just going to go in the same places but not as much. Okay, so it kind of creates that little bit of curvature to the head. On the underside of the ear here. Tiny little bit on the top of the head. Literally just dab that in by the face there. So it's more of a suggestion that these are little gray mice. What? It's a suggestion. Well, it's a suggestion of color. It's I'm not coloring in, them in completely. You can tell that they're gray because they have gray on them. Okay? I don't think I'm even going to pull in N3. I'm just going to leave it with that um, N1 and N0. I'm going to use, this is N0 right here, just to kind of blend that out, soften, soften that a tiny bit right there. But I think they're done with that color. Literally minutes to do it. Kathy is saying, what color Copic brown do you use for critters? Ooh, mm -hmm. I jump around my browns a lot. Um, by the way, I'm using R11 right now. I'm going to zoom a little bit. Yeah, let's zoom. Let's Thank you. Say when. Good, 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 good. Thank you. So this is R11. This is the same color that I used on those little ears, but I think it's really precious. Get her little dress with that. I'm going to leave the um, the little apron. I don't even need the teapot. I, don't even, I didn't have to color that, actually, now that I think about it. That's all going to be hidden. This is the only guy you might see because they're, they're, these two are going in the car. So let's get his little jacket. We might see him. This is going to be an N. I'm sorry, N. Uh, B. 91, which is upside down. Sorry, everyone. 
isn't a whole lot of space to get a lot of color. So I'm just going to do B91 there. And then I have an N0 just to get his little legs some color. And that's really it. I think I'm going to do the top of his jacket. And I'm going to use the B91 because I'm not sure if it's going to show in the car or not. But just in case it does, I want it to be colored. Okay. Uh, so what colors, Kathy says, what color Copic Brown do you use for critters? Ooh. I use, I mean, I'm all over the place with E's. I, you know, here's, here's my recommendation to you. Buy as many E's as you can. Um, E's are your earth tones. Um, and I'm all over the place with those. It depends on what I'm coloring. Um, I loved, I love E thirties and E E thirties and E fifties as like, you know, starting colors for the lightest color and then building on those. Um, E 31 is fantastic. Your, your E forties are fantastic as well. Um, and I like to have fun. I like to get into some of them that are a little more, you know, caramel, a little more, you know, uh, different browns. So I, I play around with those a lot. Andrea is saying, is there a difference between the A2 and the A4 paperweight? Paperweight. Well, the A2, the A2, A2 and A4, I think those are paper sizes. So your A2, this is your A2 size, which is four and a quarter by five and a half. Ooh, sorry. I forgot we're zoomed. <laughs> It's going to be four and a quarter by five and a half. And I'm not sure what size an A4 is. Um, but when I say A2, I'm talking about the size of the card of the card base. Beth is saying, what Nina uh, do we get for card base and for card toppers? For card toppers, I use my Nina Classic Crest Solar White. That's what I use for my card toppers. That's what I will use. Well, all right, if I'm, work, if I'm coloring with Copics, that's what I use. If I'm coloring, if I'm going to be doing uh, blending, that's when I pull in my Strathmore, uh, my Strathmore Bristol uh, smooth surface. My card toppers are usually much thicker than my card bases. My card bases, this is one of my card bases, and it's, it's actually quite flimsy. This is probably more like, I don't know, maybe a 65 to 80 pound, maybe 65 pound more like. Um, it's heavier than your basic printer paper, but it's not as heavy as the cardstock that I use for my toppers. My top, I, I like the, I like the card bases to be lighter just because, um, uh, well, two, two reasons. One is less, less expensive. And the other is I build it up with card toppers. So I end up with a really heavy card anyway. So, okay. So A, what A? So A2 is half of A1, A3 is half of A2, A4 is half of a three, so it's a quarter of an A two. Are you telling me, or are you yes. telling everybody? You a four. Is okay. Half of the, so a an a, of the size. an A four is a quarter the size of an A two. Yes. Okay. It cuts in half every time you go up a number. Every time you go up a number, it cuts in half. So an A two is half the size of an A one. A three is half the size of an A two, and an A four is half the size of an A three, or a quarter the size of an A two. Is everybody else confused? <laughs> it's like, um, oh my gosh. Gauge. Okay. So we need to zoom back out, Alan. Mm -hmm. So now that we have everybody fully confused, <laughs> at least me, <laughs> I'm confused. I'm going to go ahead and start building this. Okay, I'm not sure how far to go. Uh, that's good. I'm going to go ahead and start building. Let me go ahead and get my Copics out of here because I need the space. And I'm going to start building, and we're going to see if this comes together. This might actually be my first massive card fail. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> I am going to flip this over because of how it's folded. And here's the thing. Let me show you what I did. Um, I can see the edge here. So I, if, if, if I didn't fold it perfectly, which I didn't, let me go like that. Maybe you can see that better. I don't know. I didn't fold it perfectly, so the bottom lip is is longer than the top lip. So I'm going to fold it. I'm going to turn it over. <laughs> I'm weird that way. I'd rather have the top lip longer. So okay. Um, let me line this up on here as best I can. Sometimes I get these crooked because I don't want to get my head in there. All right. So there's my sky. So I grabbed some. Um, 
uh, what is this called? Black cardstock. And I cut it to the same width. And this is going to be my, my street, my road. And my idea is that I'm going to have the car go like this. And then you can see the, the, the street here. Where's my, um, let me grab a couple of sentiments here and tip these out. The magic of fall. I like the shorter sentiments. So I'm concerned about, I think I want this up here somewhere because I want to be able to see this. So I think this is going to come down here. I can't make the car, actually I could make that lower. So I can do that. Let's see. Here's where we're going. So remember I told you I use these two dies right here from the country house. That's what I use to cut all of these little pieces. And then I, I glittered all of the, the, um, the ones that are not green. I put like my little glitter pen on there. So this is kind of where I'm headed with it. This is what I wanted to think about. I don't know how this is going to work. And I think I'm going to have to trim a whole bunch of these down. But this is my idea. I'll show you. I was thinking I could put so that it would look like a bunch of shrubs. Of course, I'd have to trim them. Kind of like that. So it's like the shrubs are on the, like along the side of the, of the road. And I do on both sides. And then I'm going to put these up here. And have the different colors come around there. And then my thinking is that I could put one of my sentiments kind of in the middle here, like that. So that's where I'm headed with it. But I think I need to shorten this road because I think that's a little too long. So I'm going to go ahead and trim this out. Let's make it so it's two inches long. It's always fun trying to do this stuff live and not knowing if it's going to work. All right, we're just going to start gluing stuff down. See how we do. Did you show how you did that road? All I did was cut a rectangle and then I used, um, yeah, Alan's asking how did I do the road. I used this, my little Sharpie. It's a Sharpie paint pen. If you can find those, man, they're, they're fantastic. It, it's a super fine or an extra fine. So this is literally just black cardstock. And then I took, um, you can take anything. You could take, you got a white, uh, ink, uh, right? huh? You no, I didn't use a white ink pad. I used this. I uh, no, you can use a white, white ink pad. I drew these lines. I literally went like this. I went like this. I lined this up. I, here's what I did. I lined it up uh, up against one of, see the line right here? I lined it up. I just grabbed a scrap piece of paper like that and I lined it up against like that and I went like that and drew little lines. That's all I did to make a road. I had to do it a few times because the Sharpie would kind of dry almost, you know, you could almost not, you almost couldn't see it as it dried um, because, of the, because it's on black. But I did it a few times and I think it worked out all right. I'm happy with it. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and get this car on here. I need my foam. Did you guys see my foam roll lately? Oi, oi, oi. Somebody's going to have to get a new foam roll. This is all I have. Okay. So we're going to put foam there. Get one of my little, my little scrap pieces here. Grab one of these off. Oh, that's a double. I don't want a double. Let's see if that'll fit. Or maybe it's too long. Nope, that works. All right, good. So the car is going to go here like that. I think it's cute. Um, let's see. 
this guy I want to see now she's looking in to the you know in that direction you're only going to see her face and he's looking straight on so I'm going to put him let me undo this here I might might have to trim these ears a bit we're going to see but I'm going to have him I want his face to show like he's behind the wheel of the car so cute let me get this I'm going to pull this tape off of here. His little ear is going to stick up there. You know what? He's on an angle and I don't like it. So i got to fix him. Let's see. Bear oh, with me. What? You showed your roll again. Yeah, the roll is teeny <laughs> tiny now. Time. All right, so... Uh, I'm not positioning this very well. This is what I go through. I want his eyes to show. There we go. But I want him on that little sticker a bit too. Let me get a tiny, tiny little piece here to go under this ear on the car. A little bit of foam so that it's all at the same level. And then I'm going to trim off part of that ear that's sticking up. There we go. So now he's behind the wheel. Isn't that the cutest thing? Oh my gosh. Adorable. And then she, uh, let me see. I need to have a little bit up here too. And What I'm doing is just kind of building up a little foundation of where they're going to be so that they're they're sitting flat and straight. And because I have the car up on foam, I want to have them sitting properly back here. So let's see. She can be looking sideways talking to him in the car. How's that? Isn't that just the cutest? I swear it is. All right, and then I need a little bit of that on these guys. Yeah. What? It's a convertible. <laughs> Is it centered? Why they need their ears? Well, it's in the car. You know, there's more car up there. Stay with me, Alan. <laughs> Remember, you're on my side. <laughs> Okay, so next up, it's going to be these pieces. And this is where I'm going to have to do some trimming. And this is where I think we're going to end up going a little over time. Let me get some of this stuff out of here that I don't need. Um, Because I don't want to put this in the way. So I'm going to trim some of these a bit. I'm going to take these all the way out to the edge I think I can go of that card and I think it'll be really cute. This one's got to be trimmed as well. So these are supposed to look kind of like little shrubs and I'm going to layer these up. Huh? Well, yeah, but they're on the side of the road. They're driving down the, you know. They're driving in between lanes. <laughs> and no, it's just a one-lane road. This is just, I mean, bear with me here. This is, you know, it's cartoon land. Okay. You going to watch Bugs Bunny and critique it? Yes, my husband would watch Bugs Bunny and critique it. All right, so we'll go like that. Where's the, uh... Did you cut those with a die or just rip them off? No, these were cut with these dies, with this die here, oh, both of them. From the country house. Yep, from the country house, exactly. I'm going to put this one down here, I think. And then put this one up here. No. I'm laying these out because I need to see um, 
how they're going to go. Where I need to cut everything and what's going to be up on foam and what is not. And where's my other darker green one? So I have this darker green one because, oops, I'm making a lot of noise. Let me trim this darker green one. Just for a little bit of texture, like that's going to go up there. So it's just kind of like, um, so let's see. That one's gonna be flat. This will be up on foam. That'll be up on foam. Okay. So I just wanted to look kind of like there's this greenery on the side of the road, like bushes. They're just kind of going down a little country road, and it's just the cutest little thing. And that's in my head. It is. I told you this could be an epic fail by the time I'm done. <laughs> but we're gonna go. We're gonna try it. Um, let's see. Do you have any questions from anybody? Yes. <laughs> Lots of them. <laughs> if the questions are Angie, don't do that. <laughs> then please don't let me know. <laughs> uh, all right, question. Any update on the subscription box? <laughs> uh, 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 <laughs> um, hold on. I'm trying not to ruin this. Any update on the subscription box? I would say yes, we have an update on the subscription box. I don't have the date yet. I'm hoping to be showing you some card samples for that soon um, so that we can show you what things are going to be looking like. Um, I am still tentative. You know about telling you a release date only because I want to make sure when I give you a release date that I know I can hold to it and um, oh look how this actually turning out to be cute I'm happy <laughs> um, am I missing a green am I missing a green I have two greens here oh it's right here goodness gracious Ange so this is one green. This one has to be much thinner. So all I'm doing off, ca off camera here is taking these little greens and trimming them down like this. Um, that's all I'm doing because I need them to be skinnier. Um, I don't want to give you guys a date, you know, yet on when it's going to be shipping or when we're going to be launching it only because um, I want to make sure I can keep the date. And so as soon as I have a commitment on the ship date of part of the product, then I will let you know exactly when it's going to be. But it is going to be happening, and it's going to be happening probably closer to the end of this month. All right, let's put that one out there. What? We're in the middle of the month. Well, yeah, but like when I, when we actually announce, oh, did I do that in the wrong direction? Oh, for goodness sakes. I have that backwards. Um, yes, I realize we're in the middle of the month, but it's not a, it's not a Halloween set or anything like that. So, I mean, we've, we're, we're, we're fine with that. Um, but I don't want to tell you exactly when it's going to ship until I know when it's going to ship. Does that make sense? It's our first one, and I don't want to mess it up. What is a subscription box all? What is it about? This particular one? What is the theme? Yeah, what's a subscription box? Oh, what is a subscription box? Uh, it is some. Oh, sorry, I'm trying to think and think at the same time. I'm trying to get my brain thinking about two different things at the same time. I do better with that in the morning. <laughs> Then in the evening. <laughs> okay, so wait, give me just a second. So I've layered this up. Let me make sure this is going to fit. Ah. I will tell you this. Our, oh, look how cute. I am happy. Um, 
Look how cute that is turning out. I'm so excited. Yay. <laughs> so the subscription box is going to have, um, it's, it's, uh, it's an exclusive set of products. So it's an exclusive set of things like dies. It could be dies, stamps, coordinating, uh, coordinating stamps and dies together. Um, there could be stencils in there. It's exclusive product that's only going to be available in that kit. So, let's see. I think I'm going to put this up on two layers. What? Yep, there's going to be a sentiment. I promise you there will be a sentiment. I know, and we're running out of time, and I, I know, I know, I know, I know. Nope, I have plans for the sentiment. Okay. See the glitter I put on those? Can you see that? I think yeah. it's kind of fun. I like that. So I cut these things in the corners, by the way, of the papers that I was cutting using those dies. And I think it came out really cute, and I'm really happy with it. So this is supposed to look kind of like like it's covered over the top with um am i gonna be able to slide that into there yes like the canopy of trees coming over um over the top of the road let me see if i can slide this up under here and i wanted to have different colors of different you know, like there's like the leaves and stuff are all different colors. Let's see, is this going to be too long? I may have to shorten that a bit. Yep, I'm going to shorten that. Let me just go straight down. Yep. All right. So I just trimmed that with my scissors. And I'm putting these up on different layers. Kind of pretty. Uh, let's see. Let's pull this one. And trim this edge a bit. Let's try and go straight. I'm not worried about it being perfectly straight, only because I it's it's um it has this kind of wavy kind of edge here, so I can line up the edge with the side of my card. There we go. And now we're going to bring some of this beautiful gold in here, but I think I need to trim that quite a lot. Let me take that right across the top there. Put that up. Hmm, I have extra here. What am I going to do with that? Let's see. I know what I'll do. We bring a little more of this in to lower that down. I'm almost done, I swear. I know I'm over time. But I really want to make this look right. That up in there. It's still too long. There we go. So now when I put this yellow piece in, I think it's going to work better. So I want the color to come right down to that green. And so I can fit that in right there. All right, let's trim this some more. Let's see if I trimmed it enough. Rushing me. I'm rushing me. Yeah. It still isn't right. It's still not short enough. Let's do that. 
I want to make sure everything tucks in and reaches. There we go. Oops. I'm, I'm liking this. I think it's turning out really pretty. Okay, so I need potentially a little orange piece, but I don't think I have one. So let's see if I can make this yellow work. Oh, that's actually going to work. They don't have to be exactly the same on both sides, do they? Hmm. Am I missing one? I'm a little hesitant. I think I may put this little piece here. Nah, I don't like that. I wish I had another one in this color, but I don't. Cut it. Huh? Can you cut it? Can you grab the color over there, I Alan? It's right down there. It's the medium color. No, not the yellow, the medium. No, honey, it was right there with that yellow one that you had. They were grouped together. It was a cluster of them. You want to take the color that's in my hand so you can match it up? Oh, sure. There you go. Yeah, that one. Is that what you gave me? Oh, okay. All right, so we're going to cut. I'm going to have Alan cut one more of those for me. Oops. So I grabbed the die from this set. I'll show you how it goes. This is a good opportunity to show you what I do with it. Uh, purple tape. Now, let's see, I want it to be this corner up here. So I'm going to put this down just like this. I'm going to put the blade over the end of each of those and just lay this down. Alan, do you want to get me the board for the die cut machine? Don't go away. There you go. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead then and trim this one out a little bit while he's doing that. All right. So he's gone ahead and he's die cut that for me. Let me just set that up aside. Um, I need my little glitter pen. So this we're going to put right up here. So. Go ahead and trim that. This is a, uh, it's a Nuvo. It's just like a clear sparkly glitter pen. And I'm putting it on here because I did it with the others. And I want to make sure everything matches. This one is actually called just glitter gloss. I think it's clear. Yep, just glitter gloss. All right. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and put a little bit of foam on that. I'm going to tuck this up underneath. Make sure I get it before I press it down. Make sure it's in position at the edge of the card. Still a little bit wet from the glitter glue. Tuck it up a little bit farther. There we go. And then my last piece is going to be this one. And I think I'm going to have to trim that down a little bit too. And that's going to work just perfectly. Oops. And so this one I want to be flat and I want to tuck up the edge. I'm 
So what I've done is I've made sure I see a little bit of that foam. There. So I made sure that I'm not seeing any of the ends in there. That needs a little piece of foam. Because that is sticking up a little bit. There we go. Got some questions, how much, oh, <laughs> sorry, let's get back to the kit. So the kit's gonna have a, a variety of things in it. Um, this one is, I can guarantee you, is going to have some stamps and some dies, coordinating dies, as well as some other fun dies in it. Um, they will each have a theme. Um, we're going to have a, a price point on it that is uh, very reasonable. It's going to be very discounted from, um, you know, if it were, you know, very, very discounted from the retail price. Let's put it that way. What, what the retail price would be. Uh, how's that look? That's kind of cute. So it's going to be a really, really good value. I will tell, I can tell you that. I don't like where this, this is happening here. That's kind of cute. Um, and it's only, the stuff is, the product is only going to be available in the kit. That I can tell you as well. Won't be available elsewhere. It will be, um, well, for, for as long as, as it is a kit, let's put it that way. There, there will be kind of like an exclusive time. Uh, the best deal is going to be if purchased in the kit. And, um, Straight light, straight lamp. How cute, I'm loving this. Uh, but it, like I said, it will be a really good price point. I can't tell you exactly where it's going to be, uh, where the price point is going to be right now. Let's do something before I go any further. Um, I do wanna put a sentiment, and I saw one in here that I liked a lot. Love fall most of all. I like that one, and I think I'm gonna go with it. But it will be a complete kit, and there's certain things that you will only be able to get in the kit. Um, and I can tell you for for a limited time, you know, the items will only, you know, like even the stamps and stuff will only be available in the kit. And that is going to be where the best price is going to be, um, no matter what. Uh, let's see, does that work right there? I think it's a little bit off-center. And then I was thinking of putting this up here. And I think that's kind of cute. We'll see. I'll put it up there for a moment. And if I don't like it, I'll get rid of it. I kind of like it. Huh? Oh, it's just going to hang from the little tree up there. I think it's cute. Oi, oi, oi. I have a big old mess here. So I didn't have room for this and I didn't have room for him. But gosh, I hope I accomplished. I think I did. I think I like it. I think I accomplished my goal. I wanted it to look like the trees were hanging over and you can see the sky through the hanging trees that are like the canopy over this road. And then you, you know, of course, have your little shrubs and stuff that grow on the side of the road. And I, I like it. I think it's cute. So uh, Lisa's saying, can we sign up for the subscription box now? Pretty soon. We are getting that ready. We will be getting that up very, very soon. Um, what die cutting machine do I use? I use two. My go-to, let me, let me switch back to the other camera here. Hold on. Sorry. Yeah. Alan's like, yeah, here, I'll fix them. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so my go-to uh, machine, to be honest with you, um, I is is my Big Shot. It's it's been what I've used since the very very beginning. I love having my Big Shot. It is a hand crank. 
Um, but for some reason, it's my go-to. I think it's because it's the fastest and I don't have a whole lot of time. And so I can crank that as fast as, you know, as fast as I want to and, and, and just get it done. Um, I do have a Gemini, Gemini Junior, that I absolutely love. I highly recommend them. If you don't want a hand crank, uh, a hand crank that is the one to go to. Um, when we're doing, uh, when we're kind of mass producing and, you know, and cutting a lot of dies for like kits and stuff, we have, what, how many juniors do we have? Gemini juniors. Well, we have a lot of die cutting machines. I think we have four Gemini juniors and we will just kind of get them all going and just hit the buttons and let them all go. You know, if we're going to be mass producing that kind of stuff, we're not going to be hand cranking. But the one that I use right here in my studio is, is my big shot. It's just always my go-to, even though I have my, Ju my Gemini right next to it, I just want it to work faster. So, um, anyway, let me see uh, subscription box. I know we have a lot of questions about the subscription box and I promise you it is going to be awesome. I'm really excited about it. Um, but I'm also very cautious. I want to get it right the first time. I don't want to have screw ups with it. I want to make sure that when I tell you it's available, when it's going to be shipping, I want to make sure that it's all, all done right. And you know, that's, that's very, very important to me with, uh, with everything that we're doing. So I promise you it will be worth the wait. Uh, the products that are in this first kit are absolutely fun, adorable, and um, and I think you're really going to like them. So stay tuned. In the next couple of weeks, you will see the uh, the subscription go up, and we will have some images. I, I could put the subscription up now, but I can't put any images up there yet for you. And I, I don't know how you feel about just buying it without knowing what's in it. So <laughs> this, uh, uh, you buy the specific box or is it going to be a subscription thing where you would you would get them on and Alan's asking, do you buy just this box or can you, you know, buy like a subscription? And yes, you can, you will be able to do a subscription. We're still determining if it's going to be like a one month, three month, six month type of thing. And um, you know, exactly how that's going to work. So we're still putting some of that stuff into place. Um, but yeah, it will be a subscription. You, you, you'll have the option to just buy the one as well. And, um, so we're, we're still working out some of those details. Um, LDRS gift cards. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's one more thing I want to do. <laughs> we can do it. I, I just need to implement it. That's the thing we need to implement it. I need another me. If I had another me, <laughs> then... We could get some of these things done a lot faster. All right, we're going to do a giveaway. Drum roll. Brrr. We are going to actually give away. And, um, we're going to do the giveaway this time? We're going to do a giveaway. Of course we're going to do a giveaway. It's only 817 or 818. I mean, if we're going to go over time, we might as well go over time, right? Giveaway is actually going to be the City Streets Stamps and Dies. The great thing about these, as you have seen me do, I've used these with mice. I used them with, what did I, who did I use them with last week? Uh, who did I put back there? Was it, I don't know who, if it was a, no, it was people. I used, I used the people, the, the, the city, city streets or uh, city sidewalks, I think it was last time. You can put any characters behind these. They can be animals, they can be people, whatever you want, or nobody at all. Maybe it's just a parked car because you went into the store. So incredibly versatile, so we're going to give these away. I just need a name, Mr. Hunt. <laughs> Who's it going to be, boy? Who's it going to be? <laughs> Luke. That's a difficult name. <laughs> 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 I'm not <laughs> laughing at your name. I promise you. I'm just trying to read it with my tired eyes. Luann Luann Weidenfeller. Weidenfeller. Luann Weidenfeller. 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 Luann. So Luann, congratulations! Yay! You're the winner. I need you to do me a favor, please, and send us uh, send us your your what your your mailing address. Send it to customer service at ldrscreative.com so we can get these out to you right away. You're going to love these. These are so much fun. The city streets, the stamps, and the coordinating dies. You're going to love them. Extremely versatile. And these are going to last you year after year. You know what? I have green screen in still. Ooh, whoa. <laughs> 
<laughs> Angie's getting tired. I'm supposed to have green screen on. I'm just tired. <laughs> this is how we roll in the, in the Hunt household late at night. Oh, I have green screen on. Well, yeah, duh. You're supposed to. I'm open bottle <laughs> I promise you I was not drinking. And by the way, Liz, 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 if you're here tonight, and I don't know if you are, she is. I love your mask, darling. Very, very cute. <laughs> very cool. All righty, everybody. We're going to look through. Isn't that cool? You get to look through the grass or the trees or bushes. That's what they are. So anyway, everybody, I'm so sorry we went over. Um, I seem a little airheaded tonight. So, and, and that's just because it's, well, it's Tuesday and it's night. But anyway. Thank you guys. I hope you enjoyed yourselves. I had a lot of fun. I am so glad my card turned out. Thank you for bearing with me and staying to the end for those of you that did. So anyway, I have no idea what we're going to be doing on Thursday, but I will try and make it fun and I will try and keep to the schedule. Shame on me. <laughs> <laughs> Bye everybody. Thank you so much for joining us. Luann, make sure you send us your, uh, your mailing address. We'll see you guys on Thursday. Bye for now.